you want to save up $10,000 fast, I will give you the exact blueprint to do that. So that after this video, you know exactly what to do to save the 10K, how to make it as fast as possible and also where to put it. Now $10,000 might sound like an ambitious number, but it's really just a few simple steps to follow to make it very much possible. And the first thing we're going to do is to set yourself up for success. Now, according to the Michigan State University, you are 33% more likely to achieve this goal or any other goal for that matter if you write it down. So write it down in your calendar or pin it on your fridge or anywhere else where you're reminded of it. Then you find your why and the best thing you can do that is to focus on the pain that you are avoiding by saving up the 10k. Like you don't have to be scared to lose your job anymore because then you have a buffer to find a new one and you can cover the bills in between. You don't have to be stressed about bills anymore. You can stop living paycheck to paycheck and the more reasons you find the more motivated you will be to keep going. Now, because the number 10,000 can be overwhelming, it also helps to break this number down into smaller chunks. This can be, for example, two times 5,000 or four times 2,500. Now, I am not bringing up a deadline here on purpose because we want to save it as fast as possible. Of course, you can still set one for yourself, like one year. Then it could be $2,500 per quarter or $834 per month. Now, usually I'm all for setting a deadline because this also makes it much more likely for you to achieve a goal. Just beware that in this particular case, it might be that you're not using your full potential and that will be depending on your income. If we take the net average salary in the US, which is approximately $60,000 per year, then this would be to save 16% of your income, then one year is reasonable. If you are above that average, you can definitely save it up quicker than one year. Now, right from the start, you wanna resist temptation. If you are trying to save up the 10K within your checking account where you pay your bills from, I guarantee you it will not be there for long. You will see the amount in your bank balance and at some point in a weak moment, you will spend it because that's what you do with your checking account. You spend money from it. So what we actually wanna do is we wanna have a safe place for your money. And my recommendation is to put it into a high yield savings account. Now that way the money is out of sight, which is exactly where we want it to be. These days you can even get paid around 4% interest on that money. That's an extra $400 per year or around $33 per month. And that means the interest actually helps you to reach your $10,000 faster. And that without doing anything else, just for depositing the money there. Of course, the sooner you put as much money as possible in there, the the sooner it can help you reach your goal. Now we're done with the preparation and we're ready for the next step. So we want to save the 10k fast, that means we want to sprint to keep more. So here's the first thing you're going to do and you can even do that right now. Look at the date you receive your income and look how much it is. Then you take this number, so your income, this should be after tax, and you take it times 0.1. Now it will spit out a number, let's say for example $450. Now you log into your checking account and you set up a recurring transfer from your checking account to your safe place, so your high yield savings account, with that amount of money. And you do that three days after you receive your income. So if you get paid the first, you make the transfer for the fourth. If you get paid the 25th, you set it up for the 28th, you get the idea. Okay, so if you're having a panic attack just now, trust me, you're going to be surprised how well this works. And you don't have to worry either because the money is still yours. It's just in a different place. And even though, of course, we want to let it grow there, in absolute emergencies, you can take it out again. This should not become normal though. And this little method we just discussed is called pay yourself first. And it is one of the most powerful strategies to build wealth, so never go back from this. Now, in case you are adapted to spending 100% of your income, I will give you five more strategies to get along with the 90% as well. And with those, you maybe even manage to save more than the 10%. And the motto here is small steps can go a long way. Number one is have at least one no spend day per week. That is one day you spend nothing. You don't take out your cash and you don't take out your card. And that means beforehand you should buy groceries so that you don't starve that day. If you have a car, fill it up with gas so you can drive it. And also when you leave the house, take food and drinks with you that day. That is a challenging but fun exercise and it will force you to plan at least one day a week. If you're ambitious, you can even try more than one. Number two. Now the average American spends around $300 per month on eating out. That's a lot of savings potential. Now I'm not saying you should never eat out at all because it's fun to spend quality 
quality time with your friends and family. If you just cut that number in half, for example, if you're eating out six times, then reduce it to three, or even just one time less can already make a difference. And maybe here focus on times where you're tempted to eat out out of convenience, or should we call it laziness, instead of the real quality time going out with friends. Number three, if you would need to guess how much you're spending every month on subscriptions, what would it be? It turns out that people in America spend over $200 each month on subscriptions, and that's also way more than they thought they would. And I get it, signing up for subscriptions like apps or softwares or streaming services most of the time takes just a few clicks. And then the money is drawn from your bank account month after month after month. Now I can almost guarantee you that if you take a close look at your subscriptions, you will find at least one that you don't use anymore. Cancel this one. And also all the other ones you didn't even know you still pay for. Strategy number four is to put away pocket money. Let me explain. Now each time you pay for something, it will be a number like $16.74. Now what you can do is you round that number up to the next 10, which in our case would be $20. And when you get the change, you put it towards your 10K. Now, if you get it in cash, I also recommend to have a safe place for it. This can be a pouch or an older wallet where you put that money, so not the wallet you use for your everyday spendings. And then you can deposit this later into your high yield savings account. Alternatively, when you pay with card, there are also providers that offer this kind of service and you can set it up. And number five, oftentimes we have contracts that we have kept for years years and years out of convenience. And it can really pay off to take a closer look at those contracts and see if there's a cheaper alternative. Now you can either take several hours at once and go through all your contracts, or you can take on one contract at a time. So for example, this week you look at insurance X, next week at insurance Y, and after that you look at your form provider. Now that we have talked the less spending options, we wanna boost the saving. That is by creating more income. And there are several ways to do this. One of the easiest is you can sell items items from your home that you don't need anymore. Now you don't have to do that all the time, but this is a sprint. And you can use this opportunity to get rid of something that you don't like anymore anyway and stash away the extra cash. You can also rent out your flat or a spare room or your garage, and you can do that for one month or for more. This one isn't for everyone, but at least it's a possibility. Now, a little less easy, but way more effective is to take a close look at your main source of income. You can ask for a raise to get paid more, and that would be great because it's a permanent increase in income. Alternatively, you can also try to take on more hours or you can switch jobs and that way increase your income. And of course, there's also the possibility of starting a side hustle, which is everything you do additionally to your main source of income to make some extra money. That can be offering some kind of services. It can be flipping things, so not selling your own things, but other people's stuff. Or you can sell items that you created for yourself. Now, there are many, many different videos about this here on YouTube. So so check them out to get some inspiration. And what you also want to do throughout this whole thing is enjoy the ride. Because ideally you don't stop saving when you hit the 10k. You want to continue on that saving journey to build up wealth. And for that it's important that you make it fun. Because otherwise it's hard to endure it. So even though at this point it is a sprint, don't suffer too much. Now that you know how to save up the 10k, one option on what to do with the money is to use it as your emergency fund. You will find more details about this here. Thank you for watching and I hope you get there fast. Bye bye.